In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the external anatomy of the horseshoe crab Limulus. Um, this particular specimen is about 18 centimeters long from tip, from the, the anterior part of the cephalothorax to the tip of this, it looks like a tail, it's called the telson. Well, let's take a look at the dorsal external anatomy to begin with. So the body is divided into two major tagma. We have this region up here, which is the cephalothorax, coming back to this suture line right here. Then we have this region of the body, which is the abdomen. And then extending off of the abdomen is this long spike-like structure called the telson. So these animals have prominent compound eyes. They also have down here a pair of simple eyes. This hard external covering is the carapace of the cephalothorax. And out here at the edge, it's double layered. The dorsal and ventral surfaces come together and make a thick reinforced layer along the edge of this structure. Back here, we have the abdomen with lateral spines. You can see one of the lateral spines right here on this specimen. Here's another one. And a few of the lateral spines are missing on this specimen. Um, the telson is a long, rigid structure. It's attached to strong muscles inside. You also may notice that there are some bristle-like structures. These are seedy, and the seedy, if this animal was submerged, you'd be able to see even more of them. They line most of the edges of the abdomen, and uh, they use these for sensory capability for a sense of touch. Um, if you are encased in an exoskeleton, you need a way to, uh, to sense your surroundings. And so as far as external anatomy goes, I want to mention one more thing. Right here, this junction, this um, joint between the abdomen and the, uh, the cephalothorax, if we bend it like this, what you can see is that there's a soft structure right down inside of here, a very thin layer of tissue. It turns out that these animals, that limulus, is very important economically, uh, at least biomedically. And um, the reason that it's important is that it has a substance in its blood called limulus amoebocyte lysate. And this is a substance that we use in biomedical research for producing reagents for biomedical testing. And uh, by the way, this is a, a juvenile animal. It's really quite small. Adults can be two, three, four, or more times larger than this one. Uh, but this is a good size for looking at in the laboratory. But anyway, what happens is, um, in order to harvest this limulus amoebocyte lysate, it is a compound or a substance found in their blood. And so they're brought into harvesting facilities where they will bend them like this, insert a tube in here and then extract blood from these animals. And so they extract this blood, which is, um, they can pull directly out of the heart, which in these animals, by the way, is a tube-shaped structure that runs most of the dorsal part of the body up in here. And so anyway, that is what I wanted you to see in terms of the dorsal anatomy. So let's take a look at the ventral external anatomy of horseshoe crabs. Now these animals are members of the, um, the subphylum Chilicerata, which means that the first pair of appendages in the bodies of these animals are Chilicerae. And these are the Chilicerae in horseshoe crabs. The next pair of appendages out here are pedipalps. These are used for help for manipulating food and so on. And then there are four pairs of walking appendages. So they are numbers one, two, three, and four. And the fourth one is really interesting because instead of having a pair of uh, pinchers at the tip of the appendage, what these are, these four, the fourth pair of appendages is called the pusher appendage or the pusher leg. And if you can see, there are blade-like structures that can splay out and they can use these to push themselves across soft substrate. Down here underneath, 
are two little appendages. These are the posterior pair, posterior most pair. These are the chilarium or the chilarium. So let me see if I can spread that just a little bit for you. These are the chilaria down inside of here. All right. Now at the base of these animals' appendages, let me spread this so that you can see it. Do you see that bristle, sort of bristle type structure down in the base? Each of these legs, if we look over this way, you can see the legs are actually quite long and extending way up here to the dorsal surface of this uh, space. But the base, so you can imagine these sort of as the shoulders of these appendages, terminate in these bristle-like structures. These bristle-like structures are referred to as the natho base. Natho means jaw. And so the mouth in these animals is actually right down in here. Let me zoom back out a little bit so you have a better perspective. So the mouth is right down inside of this space. And what they do is they collect food, they push it down into this food groove, and then the animals move their legs. And as the legs move, imagine their shoulders grinding together and grinding up these little invertebrates that these animals eat before they're ingested. So that's kind of a walkthrough of the appendages on these animals. There you can see the chylopoda a little better down there in the bottom. Okay, and these legs, these appendages are all part of the cephalothorax. Down here in the abdomen, we have this set of layered structures. These are book gills. Actually, these are the covers of the book gills. If you lift them up down inside, there are very thin, delicate structures that are actually, this is the cover of the book gills, and then there is layer after layer of these, and they, <clears throat> they ventilate these with water, and this is where they carry out their gas exchange. So these are book gills. Okay. This topmost cover up here is referred to as the genital operculum because there are openings in it. You can't see it easily, especially in a juvenile like this, but there are openings through which the animals release their gametes. Um, this is a concave chamber down inside of the abdomen that houses the book gill. Sometimes this is referred to as the concave branchial chamber down in here. And that's pretty much it for the abdomen. Attached to the posterior end of the abdomen is the telson. And so the telson is, has an articulation right here so that it can bend. And the telson is a rigid structure that simply terminates out at the tip. Now the anus is located at the junction of the telson and the abdomen. So right down in here is a small opening. That's the location of the anus. And that is a walkthrough of the external anatomy of the horseshoe crab.